changing gears a little bit, we're going to have Bill Casey give us a talk about the um, breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma. Bill is a plastic surgeon here in Arizona. I do want to go over this topic because it is very timely and in some ways it's the elephant in the room because um, it is real and it is something that we're causing by placing implants in people. Um, it's really the second big negative strike that implants have had since they've been developed in 1960s. Um, the first being the kind of sensationalized and litigated claims that implants caused connective tissue disorders like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and whatnot. Um, fortunately, most of that was driven by the media, especially Connie Chung. Um, over time, science finally prevailed, and in 2006, silicone implants were re-released for general use. Um, but along comes breast implant-associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma. The problem is it's a very small subset of patients, but it's also very real. It's something that we can't ignore, and I think we owe it to our patients to not only understand this, but understand what causes it, how to prevent it, and what to do about it if it does develop. Uh, it's thought to be due to a chronic inflammatory process that leads to T-cell dysplasia um, in genetically susceptible individuals. And I did say that it's genetically susceptible individuals because there are a subset of patients that just aren't going to get this. And I'll go over that in a little bit. But it is real. Most of the time it's easily treated, but it can be fatal. And there's been 16 deaths linked to this so far um, that we know of. I don't have any disclosures. I really like this statement from Scott Spear, who's a plastic surgeon, unfortunately he's deceased now, but at Georgetown at the time, when silicone implants were being looked at in 2006 for reintroduction to the market. Uh, at that time, he really clarified that it's our role as, as practitioners to take care of our patients, to make it safe for them, and do what's honest and right. Um, and I think the same needs to be said about this new scare or this new real entity, which is BIAALCL, that we'll go over. The key things that I want you all to be aware of is this is a true malignancy. Um, we want to go over things if you suspect it on how to establish the diagnosis and also what to do about it if it does occur. Ultimately, we need a lot more research that goes into this um, and we're doing that. We need to educate not only the public but also the practitioners out there because I think that it is far underreported and I think it's a lot more common than we appreciate um, and also what we need to do to prevent this. Lymphomas are not unusual. About four out of five of them are going to be due to B cells. Um, a small subset of these are going to be due to T cells, the non-Hodgkin's lymphomas. And a very small subset of these are going to be the anaplastic large cell lymphomas. These are due to a chromosomal rearrangement in one of the tyrosine kinase 